Hi everybody, it's Dave the Tour Guide again with another virtual tour of Dundonald Castle. But this one's going to be a little bit different. This is going to be a paranormal tour. And that's come about because we get a lot of people, visitors and staff alike, myself included, who report incidents that they think um, are paranormal. And now you might think, well, it's an old castle. People are bound to think this this sort of thing. Um, but what got my attention is, once I've been working there a while, you tend to notice a pattern to these reports. People tend to report the same thing in the same part of the castle. So that to me, that seems to add a little bit of sort of weight to it, rather than just people coming up with random stuff, you know, because they want to imagine stuff. People seem to be consistent in a lot of their reports people who've never been to the castle before, people from all over the world, but they're consistent in what they report. So to me, that seems like maybe there's something going on here. I've certainly experienced stuff, and a lot of people seem to experience stuff around me. Um, I'll be telling you some of the stories of things that have happened there, and um, we will be meeting some quite distinct personalities as well. Actually, as we go around the castle, we've, um, we've got an old fella who seems to chat to kids, We've got um, in fact, a couple of children. Uh, people see a teenage girl and, a, and a, sometimes a smaller girl with her as well. But some people pick up on a small boy. And there's a lady who's dressed in brown who sits down in um, what we call the cellars, but there's some thought that there might be a kitchen in there as well. So people see her. Um, apparently she looks very real. There's uh, a very aggressive personality. I quite like this guy, actually. I think he's a guard. He's always in one particular doorway and um, being an ex-military man myself, I can sort of, I can appreciate what this guy's doing and um, he's a very, very strong, aggressive personality. Not nasty, he's just doing his job and he's probably the guy that people pick up on the most and dogs too, dogs seem to react to him quite a lot. So. Uh, I quite like him. And um, there's another guy who's very different. He's a bit of a, a joker, if you like. He seems to like playing tricks on people. Kids see him. Uh, and the other thing about him is he's always doing something really particular, something really quite peculiar. Not the sort of thing that you would make up. And the chances of lots of people making up the same thing does really seem you know, odd. So I suspect that people are really seeing something, the same sort of thing. Anyway, um, we'll start the tour. If you're feeling brave, come with me and um, we'll see how we do. Okay, so let's start the tour then um, from the outside of the castle, first of all. And uh, I want to take you back to 2015. And I've just started working at the castle and we've got a, a school visit on. One of the first uh, educational visits uh, that, we've, that we've done there. And I'm walking towards the castle with a, a bunch of school kids, about six years old. A little boy walking alongside me, he says, oh, there's someone in the castle already. And I say, no, there's not, it, it, it's still locked, son. Um, I've got the keys. And he says, yes, there is, look, he's up there walking about. And he, he, he definitely thinks that he's seen something, but I just laughed it off and um, thought no more of it initially. But I mentioned it in passing, to the lady that was a manager at the time. And she said, oh yeah, that happens quite a lot. Don't worry about it. Um, kids always see the, the same thing. An old man with a long white beard. Looks a bit like Father Christmas. Yeah, yeah, I should have said, sorry. Um, and that was sort of the first experience that I had of anything possibly paranormal going on. And it just started to be thinking a little bit, you know. And we jump forward now to last year and I'm doing one of the, the spooky tours. And um, we're outside the castle about the same spot actually where that photograph's taken from and the thing you need to remember is the castle's lit for this event so all the windows are lit uh, and there's nobody in the castle at this point we're all outside i've got myself the visitors and we always have a couple of members of staff as well act as a sort of a sweeper so people, people don't get lost and also we've got a, a guide then if someone needs to leave the castle in a hurry if they're feeling uncomfortable you know we can we can escort them out they're not left on their own to find their own way out so we know where everybody is there's nobody in the castle at this point and i'm telling this story about the little boy and i, I look towards the castle 
and you see the window beneath the scaffolding there's there's a large sort of arched opening and that's the main front door and then there's a smaller window just to the right of that well I, I distinctly see a figure it's, it's a head it's clearly a head and it goes left to right across that little window that window's at the top of the servant's staircase that's how uh, the servants would get from the cellars up to the main sort of feasting hall uh, and the, the, the bigger opening is actually the front door but I distinctly saw something go left to right. Uh, and I was quite shocked because I don't see stuff. I, I, I hear stuff and that's really the second thing I've ever seen. So yeah, I was quite pleased with that actually. And um, also in that picture is a sight of something else that happened. This is one of the more bizarre things and I, I really can't explain this. But if you imagine it's a really hot summer's day, whenever that really hot summer was, I think, I think it was 2018. We've got another school visit going on and the subject is Romans and we've got um, a group of the kids just in the, the corner of the grass area so sort of the far left of that picture as you're looking at it now and um, one of our ladies is, is taking the class um, you might have seen in, in, in the other stuff that we do a lady called Blythe um, in fact Blythe puts the stuff on the internet for me so thank you Blythe and she's taking this group of kids and you've got two teachers with them who are just supervising um, and they're sitting on that low bit of wall just to the left hand side of the picture, sort of the lowest bit. They're sat there just watching what's going on. And I'm over to more towards the right talking to one of our other volunteers who was going to be taking the kids inside the castle to do a tour. And then I turn back to walk back to, to, where, to where Blythe is and the two teachers both suddenly jump up at the same time. And they're looking around, looking confused, and they're sort of brushing their shoulders. And I said, you okay? And, and they said, but someone's just throwing water at us. You know, we, we, we heard it hit us, and we felt it, but we're bone dry. And I, what's going on? And I said, well, that's weird. I can't really, can't really explain that. It's never happened before or since, but they were adamant that they'd been hit with water. They heard it and they felt it, but they're bone dry. So, a little bit bizarre. Um, and I'm telling this story again on that, that same tour where I saw the, saw the first figure. And one of the other ladies who was helping me then, uh, Megan, she, she sees quite a lot in the castle actually. She was with me helping this group. And she says, while I'm retelling that story, the window at the top of the castle, right at the top that's got the, you, you can see the, the blue sky through it at the moment in that photo. That went dark like a figure stood in it for a few seconds looking out and then, then, it, then it sort of went light again when the figure stepped back. So another sort of strange thing that, that, that happened. So uh, yeah, maybe that's your fellow looking out the window again, I don't know. Okay, so now in this photo we've moved to the outside of the castle walls. Um, so the bunker wall is on the right hand side in that shot and the grass area we were looking at is the other side of the wall. And this is one of those parts of the castle um, where some people come up with the same thing time and time again. So some time ago, some years ago, I was showing a lady around the castle. She told me that she was psychic. And we got to that grass area you can see in the photograph and she suddenly stops and she says, I'm getting bodies here, there's, there's bodies here. And I said, well, what are you saying they're buried here? Because the grass, the soil isn't, isn't deep enough, the bedrock is just inches underneath the grass here. And she said, well, I don't know, I can't explain it, I'm just telling you that there's bodies here. And we sort of moved on after that, okay. Months and months and months later, I'm showing a group of guys around um, I think there was some sort of ghost hunting group um, and they claimed to have sort of certain certain skills on that line um, and we were up at the, the top floor of the castle so we're inside the castle at this point and one of the guys gets spooked by something I can't remember exactly what it was but he says I need to get out of the castle for a bit and then once we, we were done inside we, we started looking for this guy we couldn't find him and I'm walking around the outside of the castle and I, I meet him coming the other way and I'm about where the grass is in that shot. And this lad, he stops and he, he points towards me to the area where I was stood and, and he said, there's a pile of bodies there. Exactly the same place as the lady said. He said, there's not hundreds. I said, 
30 or 40. Well, you know, that's still that's still a fairly big haul, isn't it? And so, I mean, that's there's, there's two people then straight away that have come up with that. And I used that in my spooky tour. And I'm doing the spooky tour one day and we just get to that point and I'm just sort of setting the scene. And as a lady says, you're going to talk about the bodies, aren't you? And I said, ah, you heard about that? She said, no, I hadn't heard it before, but I can see them. And she even said, right at my feet, there were two bodies. It was a man and a woman laid across each other in like a, an X, a cross sort of shape. And I'm trying to think why there would be bodies there. If people really are picking up on the fact that there were bodies there, why would there be bodies there? 30 or 40 bodies sort of in a, in a pile, is how it's described to me. That's, that's usually either something done in a hurry um, or... It's certainly a little bit disrespectful, isn't it? So I'm thinking, if you've suddenly got a lot of bodies you need to dispose of quickly, is that a sign of a plague or something um, from medieval times? You now, the research I've done, I can't find anything about there, there being any any plague, major plague that's actually affected Dundonald on to that to that extent. I mean, 30, 40 people in medieval Dundonald, that's most of the village. So if it's not that, Maybe it's a result of warfare, because often, especially on the losing side, bodies get, get, get treated very disrespectfully. Uh, now, the current castle, that's not been involved in warfare. Um, there, are, there have been a couple of skirmishes in the 1500s when the ownership of the castle was transferred from the Wallace family to the Boyd family. And the Boyds tried twice to evict the Wallaces or maybe their sitting tenants from the castle tried twice without success and eventually gave up so that doesn't sound like a major doesn't sound like a major a conflict that's like a small skirmish but there was a castle as you may know before this one a larger one and that was but very badly damaged twice in the wars of independence um, once fairly early on we think and then it was rebuilt according to the archaeologist in what they describe as the English style and then that was hit again by a chap called John de Soulis, I think as he came through on his way up from Dumfries and Galloway. So maybe the castle was garrisoned by English troops at that point when John de Soulis came. So is this the remains of the English garrison? Possibly. Yes, we'll never ever know. But um, there you go. Um, I think that'll do for the moment. We should leave people wanting more. So. Um, I'll leave it at that for the moment and then I'll do a series of little talks about this length and I'll, I'll every few days and I'll, I'll get Blythe to put them on for me. So keep safe, stay at home and hopefully see you once all this is passed. <laughs>